Hello everybody, this is Dragonheart and welcome to a historical battle here. This is the Battle of Pydna and we are playing After on very hard difficulty. King Philip V of Macedon was allowed to remain in power, albeit as a client of Rome. Following Philip's death in 179 BC, however, his son, Perseus, was less willing to accept Roman control. An ambitious man, King Perseus began to restore Macedon as a regional power. The Romans, concerned that their de facto control over Greece would be eroded, declared war. After campaigning across the country, the two armies finally met near the coastal town of Pydna. Okay, so there we are. Thought I'd leave that introduction in. I know some of you guys like to watch that type of thing. This is the army composition screen here, and as you can see, Macedon heavily outnumbers the Romans. We do, however, have one unit of war elephants, four units of cavalry, some Hastati, some Triari, and of course some Velites as well. So a pretty standard Roman army, pretty decent, even though we are small in number. We do have a lot more chevrons with our units compared to the enemy units. We have a lot more experience better equipped units to fight battles such as this. And this is totally unedited from, from what I played, my very first battle with this historical battle on very hard difficulty. So again I will be quiet and let you see the introduction. A Roman army under Lucius Aemilius Paulus has been sent into Macedon to confront Perseus. After days of maneuvering, the two armies now face each other near Pydna. The Romans, camped in the hills, send a foraging party too close to the Macedonian line. A skirmish breaks out, and increasing numbers of men from either side are drawn into the fighting. The Romans begin to advance, and King Perseus readies his forces. Roman control of Macedon will be decided today, on the field of battle. Okay, so there we are, and a quick spin Your of the camera to men. see around the battlefield. And this is my army. This is the Battle of Pydna, and this is what I do to begin with. I immediately group up my units, my Equites, my Triari, my Velites, and my Hastati, all grouped together. The only unit not grouped is the War Elephant, as I survey the battlefield. Now, I did watch the recent video by Creative Assembly, and the guy that made the, well, played the video, fought the battle on the video, uh, he played on legendary difficulty and he lost the battle. And I t took some notes from that video, I was able to see some of his mistakes, and I made sure not to try and make the same mistakes as him, as we have a quick close-up of these beautiful, beautiful war elephants and the men riding them, the brave men of Rome. Look at that elephant, look at the eyes, my god. He's got a dirty face though, he needs to have, needs to have a good wash, I think, don't see. <laughs> Anyway, I am moving my Hastati right now to the right flank. And the enemy has shield bearers on the right flank, so I have to be careful. Don't want to get involved in that, of course. I immediately see an opportunity to move my lines forward, but before I do that, I think that I move my cavalry to the left flank. Let's see if it's this part. I think it is. I'm just quickly taking in the surroundings, looking at the enemy's forces. They have a long line. The good thing I find when fighting army compositions such as Macedon, uh, Sparta, Athens, Epirus, the Hellenic factions, they're very slow moving, not very good with the m mobility, quite easy to outflank, quite easy to draw into uh, traps that you can lay before them. So I bring my army forward, I bring my velites in the front line, I then bring my uh, melee troops right behind them and then my cavalry goes to the left flank as I have a quick survey of the enemy so we have Thessalian cavalry here we have some Thuros spears some hoplites foot companions thorax pikemen levy pikemen lots of levy pikemen thorax pikemen again hoplites companion cavalry that's the general there right on the flank I think this is a good opportunity seeing the general on the flank exposed but they so I decide to grab my elephants and bring them to down this little road here, just at the foot of the mountain. And I also bring my three units of Astarte that I have grouped up there. Just a little bit forward to the right flank. The pathfinding does screw up a little bit as you can see by there, so I do have to realign my, my men. 
but it's not a problem. Get the elephants down there onto the road as well. Bring the Velites forward. Meet them on the centre of the battlefield. We do have a slight height advantage, which does play a big role in this battle. I also bring my cavalry. I think I bring them over this mountain and further forward to the left. Let's see what, what I do. I do it, of course I do. I bring them to the left flank there, just over the little mountain. Elephants at the ready. Elephants at the ready. Bring the elephants forward, of course, as well. And before long, we will have our first engagement of this battle. And I must say, it does look like a beautiful battlefield. I like the scenery in the background. I like the the light of the sun glimmering off the off the lake behind. And Pidna is, of course, a a lake town, a coastal a coastal uh, settlement. And now this is where the engagement begins. So I bring my velites forward on top of this mountain here. General, the enemy are sending their cavalry force at our flank. They As seek you can to see, overwhelm us. They are cavalry attack. attacking me right now on my flank. I ignore this for now. My my general and my other unit of cavalry actually retreat down the hill, down the mountain. My elephants are now on their general, and that was stupid by the AI. Completely stupid to throw away <laughs> its general completely gives a morale debuff once you lose your general so you don't, don't really want to throw them away especially early in a battle and that's exactly what the enemy is doing right now I'm able to attack the companion cavalry with my war elephants as you can see I have all my war elephants available at the moment have lost a single elephant all I've lost so far is a few velites and a couple of horses on top of that mountain. I'm happy for the two units of horses to stay up there because they are slowing down the enemy's reinforcements advance, the the cavalry advance that they have there. So just hold them up there. And I see an opportunity now with these two units to actually attack the centre, where I believe they have some axemen and some other units, missile units, where I can attack with my general and the other unit of cavalry by the general. I'm able to attack the shield bearers now in a three-on-one attack with my Hastati I'm able to turn my Triari around to face the onslaught coming down from the reinforcements I use my special ability Draco as well give a morale debuff to the enemy I also use Rally to increase mine Elephants have done a good job on the general I can now bring them forward to wreak havoc upon the enemy and look at that massive blob in the centre I mean don't want to be too critical in this battle, I, I've bashed the ANF, but, you know, patch 12 guys, patch 12, lots of blobbing going on. Anyway, after that side note, we attack the Thessalian cavalry. I also send in my war elephants now into the center where the big blob is. It's too tempting a target not to not to go for it, to be honest. So I just go for it. I know they got pikemen and they got uh, spearmen. Thorax spears, and you don't really want to be sending elephants into that, but you know, they are elephants, they can do an awful lot of damage, even if you throw them away, they are a useful tool to have on the battlefield. And that's what I do I gradually envelop the enemy, just throwing the starty in, using the whip, using my cavalry to good effect as well. I know I've lost two units of cavalry on the top of your screen, but it is worth it in the long run. My equitates have done well, they can now skirt back around and attack the Cretan archers. Hoplites are coming to reinforce. My elephants need to use Stampede and start doing some serious damage now. Astati! We attack the shield bearers there. And now, as you can see, on the hill above you, on the top left of the screen, where my uh, Triari are facing upwards, the enemy horse reinforcements do start charging downwards any second now, as you can see on the top of your screen. And I counteract this now with the three units that are facing them ready, and the cavalry that I have nearby as well. So a rapid advance now. No, not quite a rapid advance, I thought I did that at that stage, I didn't. But I use my general to give a, give a rally to my men and inspire. Good old speech by the old general. Proud Romans all. Proud Romans all. My elephants attack the hoplites. 
made short work now in the bottom and I can now reinforce. We are now winning according to the uh, bottom left of the screen, the yellow and red bar. I now bring my general to the top of the mountain to cut off the escape routes. And now we can swarm the enemy, just throw everything in. Their hoplites are shaken, they are routing. Their foot companions are steady at the moment, they are proven to be a pain in the ass. They still have all 160 of them, so I quickly bring the elephants towards them and everything else to make short work of them. And now we go for a unit cam on top of the elephants. You hear the cries of battle, the men shimmering, the clanking of the shields, the bashing of the swords. We know this has been a bloody battle, but will Rome be victorious? It looks like it at the moment. Here are spears. They're shaking in their boots right now as my cavalry and my men advance steadily towards them. Foot companions down to 129 men. I'm now sending cavalry round to outflank. The foot companions are now shaking, which is good for me. And my general at the top of the screen marches to the top of the mountain to ov oversee the battlefield and observe the carnage and destruction that has been the Battle of Pydna. And here we go, we have a look now. Killing some of the stragglers here, celebrating in victory as they wipe the blood off their faces. And they survey the battlefield and the carnage below them as loose horses fly around the battlefield, neighing and crying. And the Thuros spears and the foot companions are all that left of this Macedon army. We use the whip as best as we can. Our oh, Equites use Draco. We get all the special effect of buffs going our way. Debuff the enemy as best as we can. Our Triari go for a rapid advance. Just throw them all in there. We know that victory is within our grasp. We just need to take it. And my general marches right to the tip of this mountain. This long, arduous trip that has been the Battle of Pydna is finally over. And we can taste sweet, sweet victory. As we go for a cinematic mode, look now at this battle. As we see the men in their last stand here, the Thuros spears. As my cavalry goes for a cavalry charge straight into the rear. Ooh, look at that. Men flying about the place. Bloody, bloody sight for the Macedonians. And they in the distance. You can see the general triumphantly looking down proudly at his men who fought bravely in this campaign. And there we have it, guys. This has been the Battle of Pydna. I've been Dragonheart. I hope you've all enjoyed this video. I shall leave you now with the closing moments of this battle and, of course, the results screen. Anyway. Until next time, goodbye.